Astral projection is a subject that sparks intense debates. Can people really leave their bodies and witness the world from an external viewpoint? Is it a real event or just a fruit of our imagination? And what do the sacred scriptures like the Bible say about this matter? This idea is not just modern accounts of figures such as Abraham and Ezekiel in the Bible suggest that even the prophets may have experienced something similar. This leads us to ponder. Are these stories evidence of a real spiritual phenomenon or just symbolic tales? For those who claim to have experienced astral projection, the concern is not just theoretical. Is there a real risk of not being able to return to the body after such a journey? Moreover, what would be the methods or techniques used by these people to achieve and control this experience? Such questions encourage us to explore more deeply the nature of human consciousness and to consider the possibility of there being aspects of our existence that go beyond the common understanding of what it is to live and perceive. Some people report having out-of-body experiences involuntarily, often associated with sleep. During these episodes, while they sleep, they have dreams in which their consciousness or soul seems to detach from the physical body, allowing them to visualize themselves sleeping and observe the surrounding environment. This duality of perception can be uncomfortable for some as it creates a sense of detachment between the physical body and consciousness. For others, however, this experience is described as extraordinary, providing a sense of freedom where they can even influence the content of their dreams. On the other hand, there are people who seek to achieve astral projection intentionally, using practices such as meditation. These techniques are designed to facilitate conscious out-of-body experience and are seen by many as a way to explore deeper dimensions of human existence. Furthermore, near-death experiences are also often cited as moments when individuals experience the separation of consciousness from the physical body. People who have gone through such experiences report having a clear awareness of what was happening around them, even in states of brain death declared by science. These accounts include precise details about medical procedures and actions of the healthcare professionals present, which often surprises due to the accuracy of the descriptions. Other individuals experience astral projection in response to intense traumas or significant emotional stress, suggesting a wide range of triggers for this experience. What makes this phenomenology even more fascinating is that it is not a modern concept. Anthropologists have found evidence in historical records dating back millennia, showing that people of diverse ethnicities, genders, ages, and cultures around the world have reported similar experiences, some of which were even documented by ancient civilizations. To study these phenomena scientifically, there is a specific field called projectiology. This discipline is dedicated to the study of out-of-body experiences and other related events that occur beyond the physical boundaries of the human being. According to Projectiologi, the structure of the human being is composed of four distinct parts which go beyond the classic four elements of nature, fire, air, earth, and water. These parts are the soma. This is the name we give to our physical body. It's the part of us that we can see and touch. Think of it as the house where you live, but in this case, the house is you. It's your body that eats, exercises, rests, and interacts with the physical world around you. It is the most concrete part of ourselves. The energosoma, also known as the energetic body. You know when you enter a place and feel a strange vibe, or when you're near someone and feel good or bad energy, even though that person doesn't say anything. That's related to the energosoma, it's like an aura or an energy field that surrounds your physical body and interacts with the energies around you. It can be affected by places, people, and even your own feelings. The psychosoma. This is a bit more complex. It is known as the emotional body or the astral body in some traditions. You know how sometimes you feel emotions so strong that they seem to go beyond your physical body? Like when you're super happy and feel a good energy all over the place, or when you're sad and that sadness seems to occupy a space larger than just inside you. The psychosoma is the part that deals with these emotions and sensations. It's like a more subtle body that carries our feelings and emotions. Finally, the mental soma. This is our mental body. This is the part of us that deals with thoughts, ideas, creativity, and our ability to understand and make sense of the world. 
When you're solving a complicated problem, daydreaming, or even when you're reading a book and getting lost in the story, it's your mental summer that's working. It is responsible for everything that happens in our head, from the simplest thoughts to the grandest ideas. This holistic perspective offers a deeper understanding of the complexity of human experience, encompassing not just the physical aspect, but also the energetic, emotional, and mental components. The experience of astral projection, or out-of-body experience, occurs due to a temporary separation between the components that constitute the human being, especially between the emotional body and the physical body. This disconnection can happen both voluntarily through deliberate practices such as meditation and involuntarily in situations of extreme stress or during sleep. During this separation, the individual's consciousness, which is normally integrated with all, these components moves outside the physical body, allowing a perception of oneself and the surroundings from an external perspective. This phenomenon suggests a flexibility in the union of these four essential elements of being, which, although usually interconnected, can temporarily dissociate under certain conditions, leading to extraordinary experiences of self-observation and expanded perception. This process establishes a vital energetic connection known as the silver cord. This terminology refers to a biblical reference made by King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes, especially when discussing old age and the transitoriness of life. Solomon warns about the importance of living fully while one is young and able, using the metaphor of the silver cord to symbolize the fragile link between the soul and the physical body, as expressed in Ecclesiastes 12 to 6. Before the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken. This idea of the silver cord is noted in projectiology, which describes this energetic connection as a vital link between consciousness and the physical body during out-of-body experiences. Many people who undergo astral projections report perceiving this link as a type of spiritual umbilical cord that keeps the soul tethered to the physical body. This connection is seen as essential for the reintegration of consciousness into the body after projection symbolizing the importance of maintaining the integrity of this link to avoid complete disconnection, which would be equivalent to death. The perception of this silver cord by those who experience astral projection reinforces the notion that there is a continuity and an essential link between the physical and non-physical aspects of being. Individuals who return from near-death experiences often describe the vision of an intense and enticing light which makes them ponder the possibility of completely detaching from the silver cord that links them to earthly life. This perception resonates with the knowledge expressed by King Solomon, evidencing an ancient understanding of the connection between body and spirit. A second surprising revelation comes from the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, where Ezekiel himself narrates how the hand of God was upon me, and he took me out in the spirit of God and set me down in the midst of a valley. This passage, specifically in Ezekiel 37, Tom 1, illustrates an experience where Ezekiel feels his spirit being removed from his physical body by divine intervention, allowing him to witness the prophetic vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. This vision symbolizes resurrection and revitalization, where dry bones, representing death and desolation, are reanimated with life through the breath of God. Ezekiel's experience parallels modern narratives of astral projection, suggesting that he indeed had an out-of-body experience, facilitated by a divine force. This experience allowed him not just to witness, but also to embody the prophecy of resurrection, offering a direct perspective on the promise of life after death or spiritual renewal. Thus, the experience lived by Ezekiel, and the prophecy he was charged to convey intersect, demonstrating the possibility of a deeper and experiential understanding of divine messages, reinforcing the intrinsic connection between body, spirit, and the divine. The biblical narrative involving Abraham provides a third intriguing example, this time involving the divine promise of a vast progeny. When God promises Abraham, then still childless, that his lineage would become a great nation, a moment of disbelief and questioning arises from Abraham. To illustrate and reinforce his promise, God instructs Abraham to step out of his tent and observe the stars, telling him that his offspring would be as numerous as them. 
The usual translation of this episode suggests simply that Abraham was to look up at the skies. However, a more detailed examination of the Hebrew term used, habet na hashamayim, reveals that habet implies a downward gaze. This orientation suggests a perspective that would be physically impossible for a human being in Abraham's position, that is, to observe the stars as if he were above them. Thus, it can be interpreted that Abraham's experience in this context was of a prophetic nature and involved a form of astral projection or out-of-body experience. In this vision, Abraham's consciousness or spirit was elevated to a position above the starry firmament, allowing him a literal and figurative understanding of the divine promise. He was able to observe the stars from above, a perspective that transcended human and material limitations, providing a direct and profound experience of the magnitude of God's promise. The narrative of Moses ascending Mount Sinai, where he spent 40 days and 40 nights without consuming bread, water, and without sleeping, as stated in Exodus 34:28 illustrates another dimension of these transcendental experiences. This episode suggests that Moses, in his communion with God, transcended human physical needs, indicating a state of elevated consciousness, are a form of spiritual projection, where his spirit was more active and stronger than the limitations of his physical body. Such biblical accounts of experiences that seem to defy normal human capabilities lead to speculation that many prophets may have experienced similar types of spiritual projection or altered states of consciousness that allowed them to receive divine revelations. Regarding the possibility of consciously inducing out-of-body experiences, there are practices and techniques that can facilitate this process. Firstly, it's essential to create a conducive environment, free from interruptions and noises that may distract the mind. The tranquility of the space is crucial to allow deep relaxation. Additionally, it's recommended that the person positions themselves in a comfortable spot, such as a cozy armchair, thus facilitating the transition to a state of consciousness more receptive to out-of-body experiences. A common technique to induce the experience of astral projection or out-of-body exit involves meditation focused on a visual element, such as a wall. In this exercise, the practitioner should intensely concentrate on the wall in front of them, imagining the existence of a door in it. This door, although not physically real, becomes a symbolic passage in the meditator's mind. The idea is to visualize oneself approaching the door, opening it, and crossing to the other side, which symbolizes the transition of consciousness outside the physical body. With the depth of meditation, the sensation of separation between consciousness and the body can become more palpable, offering a different perspective of existence detached from physical limitations. Another similar technique, but with a different focus, involves fixing attention on a specific object, such as a vase of flowers. Here, the goal is to concentrate fully on the chosen object with the intention of spiritually approaching it. As the concentration intensifies, the practitioner may begin to feel a disconnection between their consciousness and their physical body culminating in the experience of projecting out of the body and approaching the object with their consciousness. Both techniques share the fundamental principle of focusing the mind so intensely that the practitioner's perception transcends the physical body, facilitating an out-of-body experience. These practices, though varied in details, highlight the importance of concentration and visualization as tools to explore altered states of consciousness and the multidimensional nature of the human being. As for the safety of these experiences, it's a topic that raises doubts and concerns. Some believe there are associated risks, especially if the consciousness feels so at ease outside the body to the point of not wanting to return. However, it's crucial for individuals interested in this practice to be in good physical and psychological conditions. A healthy mind and body are essential for safely navigating these extraordinary experiences which require an understanding and respect for individual limitations and capabilities. But the question remains, is there a risk of not returning from astral projection? No, there are numerous studies on astral projection, also called astral travel, and all of them affirm that there is no possibility of not returning. We undergo astral travel every day, unconsciously, and return to our physical body. The only difference is that we will do this consciously. 
it's impossible not to return due to the presence of the silver cord. At the slightest sign of fear, astonishment, or shock in the astral plane, the silver cord returns our spirit to our physical body, and we wake up at once. During the projection, you might even see your silver cord, that's why it has this name. It's a very thin and subtle cord that never breaks as long as there is life in the physical body. There isn't a physical risk, such as not returning to our body, for example. The risk is of trauma, in case you're not prepared for the experience. That's why we always warn that one should study a lot before starting to venture into astral projection. One needs to be spiritually prepared for this experience. Now, the benefits of engaging in practices that allow out-of-body experiences can be significant. Many report a deep sense of peace and serenity upon detaching from earthly concerns and physical pains, gaining a new perspective on life. This tranquility is not just momentary. It can deeply influence an individual's overall well-being, even after the consciousness returns to the physical body. The experience, etched into the essence of the being, can offer valuable insights and a lasting sense of calm and clarity, contributing to a deeper understanding of oneself and the surrounding world. A second notable benefit of out-of-body experiences is the potential reduction or elimination of the fear of death. These practices provide a direct experience of consciousness or spirit separate from the physical body, which can lead to the understanding that existence is not limited to matter. This realization echoes biblical teachings about the dual nature of human beings made up of both body and spirit. According to scripture, while the body is destined to return to the dust of the earth, the spirit moves toward a continuity beyond physical life returning to God. For those who explore these dimensions through spiritual experiences or expanded consciousness, death may begin to be seen in a new light, not as an absolute end, but as a transition to another form of existence. This understanding can bring great relief to people who previously lived under the weight of fear of mortality. Recognizing that the essence of the being can persist beyond corporeal life offers a comforting perspective on the cycle of life and the eternal nature of the spirit, helping to alleviate the anxieties related to the unknown that death represents. A third significant benefit of out-of-body experiences is the deepening of self-knowledge. The sense of serenity and detachment from daily concerns that accompany such experiences allows for a clearer and more objective view of one's own life, similar to the perspective a mentor or guide might offer. When we are immersed in our problems and challenges, it can be difficult to see clear and objective solutions as our vision may be clouded by the proximity and intensity of the issues. However, experiencing consciousness or spirit outside the body creates an opportunity to observe one's own existence from an external perspective. This symbolic distance can reveal insights and solutions that were not apparent when one was inside the problems. Just as an experienced mentor uses their external vision, knowledge and desire to help guide someone, projecting consciousness outside the body can offer a new lens through which one can reassess their own life, values, goals, and challenges. This level of introspection and self-analysis can be extremely valuable, providing clarity on aspects of life that previously seemed confusing or insoluble. Upon reintegration with the physical body, this new perspective and the insights gained can be applied to promote positive changes, better understanding of oneself, and a direction more aligned with the individual's true desires and purposes. Astral projection is indeed a reality for many people, occurring both involuntarily and through deliberate practices. Far from being a cause for alarm or fear, this experience can enrich life in various ways. The key is to approach astral projection with a positive and open perspective, recognizing its potential to enhance serenity, dispel the fear of death, deepen self-knowledge, and offer new angles to face life. Understanding the nature of this experience can help realize that it's not about acquiring prophetic or supernatural abilities. As the narratives of biblical figures like Abraham or Ezekiel might suggest, but rather about recognizing and exploring the spiritual connection inherent in every human being. The consciousness or spirit so evidently manifested in these experiences symbolizes the eternal connection with the divine, a reminder of the spiritual dimension that composes the human essence.